All right, so playing just the first few notes, it's enough for everyone to recognize this song. Anyway, we all know it, Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry. But did he really write that riff? Well, you decide, because this came out nine years earlier. And if you put it in the right key, or the same key, and put some overdrive on it. It sounds pretty much identical, right? But this traditional jump blues line is played by Carl Hogan in the 1946 song Ain't That Just Like a Woman by Louis Jordan. And the intro is even cooler when it's played with the big band or with the horns. Barry did change up a few things, so he used double stops instead of single notes. And he added the sliding action. So although the melody is slightly different, it is so much alike that if you're playing it together, it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> So let's just say he turned the jump blues into rock and roll and let's settle for inspiration. Anyway, let's move on with number two. It's Nirvana's hit song and many guitarists first ever guitar riff, Come As You Are. And it's funny because if you rush like crazy and mess up the timing of the riff just a little bit, as many beginners do, and add some overdrive, it sounds almost exactly like a song released eight years earlier. This is the song 80s by the post-punk band Killing Joke. And before we compare them back to back, let's first look at all the striking similarities between the two. So first of all, both riffs are played on guitars that are tuned a whole step down. It sounds great. And secondly, both riffs alternate between an E minor and a D5 chord. And thirdly, both riffs almost have an identical rhythmic pattern to it. And lastly, they both use the chorus effect, so without, with, chorus. Um, so first let's play a Nirvana riff and then play Killing Joke right after it and you decide if you hear where it changed. Well, it probably wouldn't surprise you that if you layer the vocal of Come As You Are over the 80s guitar riff, it sounds pretty awesome. Come as you are, as you were. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. So at the time, Kurt was pretty nervous about releasing Come As You Are as a single because he too felt it was too similar. And he was right because Killing Joke did complain, but they didn't sue because of financial reasons. And also maybe because even their song kind of took inspiration from another riff. Here's the song Life Goes On by The Damned. And they released this song in 1982. So three years before Killing Joke released 80s. Listen to this. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same riff. Very striking, right? So it's literally the same chords again, the same timing, but now it's played on a bass guitar. Boo. So now three songs at the same time, Kurt Cobain singing Come As You Are over Killing Joke 80s, the riff with The Damned, all three together. Come as you are. Yes, you were. Yes, I want you to be. That's what I call a super trio. Let's move on to number three. So Deep Purple and their most iconic hit song, Smoke on the Water. So I made a whole video about the peculiar events surrounding the birth and the existence of this riff and this record. It's a surprisingly interesting story. You can check it out over here. But now to the creativity or the lack thereof uh, that led to the birth of this riff. So according to Richie Blackmore, it's Beethoven's fifth played backwards. And well, I'm not sure if that was a joke, but let's just say it's, it's a stretch. I mean, 
um, you get something that sounds vaguely familiar if you reverse Beethoven fifth, change the rhythm up and change the notes, <laughs> notes up. So what's then left of the riff? I mean, listen to this. Uh I don't know. But what's a more logical explanation is that Blackmore might have heard a song by Brazilian guitarist and songwriter Carlos Lira. Hmm. This is the bossa nova version of Smoke on the Water and it's called Maria Moita and it was released in 1964, so that is eight years before Smoke on the Water came out in 1972. So I don't know, Beethoven's fifth, a coincidence, some inspiration going on, I don't know, you tell me. Uh, if you play them together in the same key, by the way, it sounds absolutely hilarious. <laughs> But then again, it's just playing the blues scale in a pretty basic rhythm. So one could argue that both could have been written on their own, but it's awkwardly close if you ask me. Let's call it inspiration and move on. So at number four, we find two classic Beatles riffs that were, well, this is Revolution. Mm, I need a different guitar again. <laughs> It's definitely not a stretch to contribute to John Lennon's blazing sliding double stop action to Chuck Berry, but it's actually not. It's the triplets and the timing of the slides that basically make it a one-on-one -on -one copy of Do Unto Others by blues guitarist Pee Wee Creighton. So let's have a listen to this. This is Lennon in 1968. And here is Mr. Creighton 14 years earlier in 1954. 54. I think it sounds better than the Beatles. Peter Creighton absolutely killed it. The tone, the playing, it's kind of ridiculous from 1954 to be honest. Anyway. Uh, Let's just call it inspiration. Um, the next one is more interesting, I guess. It's I Feel Fine by the Beatles. And supposedly it should sound very much like Bobby Parker's Watch Your Step. Hmm, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm getting the vibe. It's, it's pretty evident when, when John Lennon literally said that What's Your Step was one of his favorite records. So first look at the similarities. Both are traditional blues formats, basically playing the one, the four and the five chord where the riff is superimposed over the chord that it's playing. So this is What's Your Step, the one chord, the four chord and the five chord back to the one. And if you do it uh, with I Feel Fine by the Beatles, they start on the five chord to the four chord and to the one chord. And rhythmically it's very close as well with the accents almost literally on the same spot and the first few notes being identical. Let's put them in the, in the same key, E. So the first few notes are the same of both riffs. And then uh, Parker ends like this. So he stays in that minor pentatonic vibe, that pentatonic note. But John Lennon really goes beyond that. He goes to, to the four of the chord, to the three, and then to the nine. And that definitely gives a very different ring to the riff. So different that for me, it really transformed into something new. But it definitely took inspiration from Bobby Parker. Just like, well, <laughs> the Burbles, Red, Red, Blue. And Let's Zeppelin's Moby Dick. That to my ears sound even more similar to Watch Your Step. But again, it's just playing the pentatonic scale in a blues lick or a blues riff. I mean, 
what's new. <laughs> so before we go to the last one, which is absolutely hilarious if you ask me, uh, just know that the chances that this video will be demonetized are close to 100%. So it would mean the world to me if you could check out my new electric guitar course that will step by step teach you about the fundamentals of the perfect guitar solo, or the gorgeous blend between playing rhythm guitar with adding licks in between, or how to really use the pentatonic scale in your everyday playing. And from finger picking to the blues, like everything is in there and it really can transform your playing from playing the same licks over and over again and being confident and improvising over the most seen chord progressions. Even if it's just using the pentatonic skill, you can get so much out of it. You'll learn to play in sounds like John Mayer or Mark Loeffler and all the legends you love. So it's all with tabs, with backing tracks, detailed instructions videos, going over everything a guitar player should know. So it's called Electric Elevation and it bridges the gap between simple music theory everyone should know and playing with feel and it's very awesome if you ask me well check it out at electricelevation.com and move on to number five so in, for number five we dive into the world of metal so listen to this yeah probably all recognize this as iron maiden's two minutes to midnight but is it really that song or is it some well in 1975, Black Sabbath released Megalomania. And it's not the same, but it sounds pretty familiar, right? Okay, check this out. In 76, Rory Gallagher released Moonchild. Okay, okay, getting there. Almost in the same realm, the same ballpark. Anyway, in 1980, White Spirit released Midnight Chaser. Okay, very, very familiar, right? And in that same year, Bargy would release Wildfire. Check this out. And in 1981, Riot would release Swords and Tequila. Woo! All right, in 1982, Xset would release Flash Rockin' Man. And then, in 1983, Merciful Fate released Curse of the Pharaohs. <laughs> I love it. This was all before Iron Maiden released Two Minutes to Midnight in 1984. And then you dare to say that all modern pop music sounds the same. Anyway, I, I, I guess it's just Metal 101. Palm muted open strings, syncopated rhythms, some drums going on. It's basically the 145 of the blues, the 251 of the jazz, the 808s from hip hop. It's just a sound and I don't think you can blame anyone for using it to the fullest. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, there you see that so much of modern music history is all tied together by similar riffs, similar rhythms, similar chords, similar patterns, and that's why the current trend of suing over plagiarism is kind of, it's kind of scary. Whenever I write something, it's usually a place my ears direct me. And is that because it sounds vaguely familiar or is it something subconscious, trying to copy something I heard before? You never really know, uh, unless you do it on purpose, of course. <laughs> anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. So, or riffs I missed out in this video. I, I, I'd love to know what you think. So please let me know down in the comment section. And for now, I wish you a lovely day. Keep on playing, keep on writing. See you next time. And check out Electric Elevation. Links are below. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Bye.